So in the very first two lessons of the inventory, we talked about, first of all, some of the challenges associated with inventory, because inventory is a large component of working capital. So in our first lesson on inventory, we talked about the need for an automated control system to really get a handle on all the inventory items and to track the movement and to put quality control standards in. There's a lot of things that go into managing inventory. But the thing is, once we have this inventory control system, some type of automated system to get control over all the different items that we sell as a retail business, then we can collect the data and really start to measure things. So now we're gonna get into some real specific weeds, specific data elements or data points so that we can apply some metrics to figure out how, to we, how do we manage that inventory? How do we, when do we go out and reorder the inventory, replenish it? How much should we have on hand? Again, we wanna minimize how much we have on hand. And then the second lesson on inventory, we talked about the importance of making sure we connect all the different players in this value chain that we deal with in inventory because you could have manufacturers, suppliers, vendors, shippers, customers. There are a lot of players involved in this supply chain, so a supply chain management approach to managing inventory is very, very important. So we have some big challenges with inventory. Supply chain management is a very good comprehensive integrated way to connect and get everybody in sync. So assuming you have a very good automated system to control all the inventory items, then we want to make sure we measure certain data points. So two data points that you absolutely need to know for every product that you sell is you've got to know the demand for all the units that you're selling. This is a demand-driven model. Remember, we use the word demand-driven. We're not supply-driven, we're demand-driven, which means we're pulling based on demand. So we don't want to keep supplying, supplying, and building up inventory that never sells. It's going to be driven by demand. So we want to measure the annual demand for each product that we sell. So you must measure demand D, we'll label that as D, D for demand. So we need to project and figure out what our annual demand is. We should be able to look back at how we're selling our products. Every product we should be able to see and plot it and see how, how it's selling. So this will be demand driven, so we have to measure the demand of every product that we sell. We'll label that D. A second point, data point that you have to have is you gotta know what the unit cost is for that inventory item. So if you go out and buy it from a vendor or a supplier and you sell it as a retailer. So if you buy uh, pencils and you sell pencils for 50 cents each, that's what it costs you to buy a pencil, but then you sell it for 75 cents, that unit costs 50 cents. It's gotta be in your inventory system someplace. We gotta know the unit cost of every inventory item and we gotta know the demand. So this first and second one, these two data points, this D and C, are a must. You got to know the demand and you got to know the unit cost just to get basic control over your inventory. And once you have those two data points and you've got that collected in your inventory control system, then we can start to apply some more specific data points and start to measure things and plan things. And specifically, if you have a commodity that sells evenly throughout the year, food, water, com basic commodities tend to fit a very uniform model. So they fit something called the economic order quantity model. So we're gonna use some data points from, from the economic order quantity model to help us control inventory. Three in particular we're using are, how much should our order supply be? So when I go back, and I, I want to replenish the inventory because it's coming, it's coming down, 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 down. Now I need to reorder and replenish the inventory. What is that order size? What should it be? And if we have uniform demand throughout the year and we can replenish the inventory very quickly when it gets down to zero, then we can actually use this economic order quantity formula to measure this Q. This Q is the size of the order that we will place to replenish the inventory item. 
So here's our third data point, key data point, and this will be a calculation where there's uniform demand throughout the year and we can replenish the inventory just like that, very quickly, just in time inventory replenishment in the world of uh, inventory management. There are two costs in the economic order quantity model. They get measured. Cost to place an order, which we'll label as an S. So every time you go back, go out and you place an order, you got to fill out a purchase requisition. You got to spend some time on the phone. You may have to prepare a sheet, ship it to somebody, get it approved by somebody. That time, that expense is a cost to actually place the order. And then when we have inventory, obviously we have to store and hold inventory. So as you have inventory on your, in your retail business, it's sitting up, it's occupying floor space. So you have costs associated with storing and holding it, floor space. If you have a lot of inventory, sometimes like a car dealership has to pay property taxes on the vehicles that are on the lot. So those are costs to hold and store the inventory. We'll label that as I, and then we can take a percent of the unit cost, because a lot of times we may measure this as a percentage of our unit cost to store and hold, and we'll label that H. So if the unit cost is $10, and let's just say I is 10%, 10% times 10 is a dollar holding cost per unit. So that becomes part of our cost. And the cost to order and the cost to store and hold, there's a trade-off that exists between those two. So let me explain what I mean by that. If I place lots and lots of orders to replenish the inventory during the year, then that means I'm not holding very much inventory in stock. So my storage cost, holding cost, tends to go down as my cost to order goes up. So if I place more and more orders to cost and replenish inventory a lot during the year, then my storage holding cost goes down and vice versa. If I don't place a lot of orders during the year, I only place one order during the year to replenish inventory, but that means I'm probably storing and holding a lot of inventory. So there's a trade-off between these two costs, and what the economic order quantity calculation does with this Q, it says we're going to find the order size that helps minimize these two. We find that point, that trade-off point, where you're optimizing these two, and this should be your order quantity to minimize these two types of costs in controlling and managing inventory. So once we've got these data points down, we need to collect these data points, D, C, Q, S, we'll have H, we'll, we'll have a percentage, we'll refresh this percentage once in a while by studying what's going on with our control variable and fixed cost. Then we can apply these core metrics and we can take these core metrics and use these to help us manage and control inventory. So the number of orders that we will place during the year would be the demand during the year divided by the size of each order. Okay, so D divided by Q, number of orders to place during the year. The order cost, S, cost to place an order, times the number of orders that we place during the year, D divided by Q. The average inventory level would be quite low. We want to hold very little inventory. In fact, how low does it get? Well, the order quantity size divided by 2 is literally the average inventory level in the EOQ model world. And the average inventory cost would be the average inventory level, Q divided by 2 times the unit cost. So as we, start to, as we collect these data points, we can start to punch these into these formulas so that we can start to measure and figure out how to manage our inventory better. What is the average inventory level? What is our average inventory cost? What's our average carrying or holding cost? Store whole carriage inventory. So if I know what it is per unit, right, and this is my average inventory level, Q divided by 2, now I can start to measure and figure out what this is. 
and our total inventory cost in this model, this EOQ model, would be our cost to order plus our cost to store hold and carry the inventory, okay, which we calculated here. Here's our order cost, okay, and here is our carrying or holding or storage cost. So if we add these two together, this gives us our total inventory cost. So we will work through this formula, and this formula is called the Economic Order Quantity Model, or EOQ, and it is the square root of 2 times D times S divided by H, okay? The next lesson will work through this example. The main thing I want to get through to you is make sure you collect these data points in your control system. You can figure it. You don't have to necessarily use EOQ to measure what your quantity size, what your order size should be. If you don't have uniform, you have seasonal inventory items, it's going to be much more difficult. So, but if you do have uniform consistency in your inventory levels throughout the year, then you should try to apply the EOQ model, or as a minimum, try to collect some of these data points, these, to figure out how we're going to minimize and control these costs. So this is a challenge for managing inventory, but you, if you're going to manage something, you've got to measure it, and to measure it, you've got to collect data points, and you've got to work through calculations. That's just the reality of it. So there is a lot that goes into managing inventory. Next lesson, we'll actually go through these calculations. We'll work through these calculations. Right now, just try to get your arms wrapped around these data points and how they plug into these metrics that we need to use to control and manage inventory.